Hello guys of United Rock Nations, we are with uh, Architects here in Paris. Uh, everything is going well? Yeah, fantastic. Hanging out in an underground dungeon today. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about uh, the tour, how it's going now. Um, uh, yeah, amazing, really. It's been uh, surreal, really, yes. you know, just, uh, I don't know, things seem to have, uh, I guess the new album went down well and um, just been crazy getting to do five weeks where there's lots of people at the shows every day and every day I get on stage and think we're the headline band that's so weird I don't know it's just strange I'm not used to it but it's um, it's been amazing um, tell me what happened between Daybreaker and the new album um, how was the response of, of, of the fans of People about Daybreak. Of Daybreaker, yeah. Well, it was an interesting one because I felt like some people. I don't think we were a very fashionable band after we did the Here and Now. Um, some people, a lot of people, used I still speak to you now, and they go, "I don't know why you hate that record." And maybe I don't hate it, but it, it's true we weren't a very fashionable band around that point. I don't think it was very cool to like Architects. <laughs> um, so I felt like we went into that feeling like we had a bit of a point to prove. Like, you know, I don't feel like we owe anyone anything or anything like that, but we just wanted to show that, like, we hadn't gone soft or something, I don't know. So, yeah, but I think the album was did okay, but it was still a slow burner. It's funny because we toured it a lot, and the songs did okay. Obviously, like, These Colors Don't Run was very popular, but a lot of the other songs were... You know, it seems to be over people's heads a little bit. Exactly. Uh, but it's not until this tour, actually, now we have a new album, we play songs off Daybreaker and people go, yeah, and go crazy <laughs> for it. And like, well, okay, better, le better late than never, I guess. <laughs> and what happened with Century Media? Because you have changed uh, a record company or something. Yeah, well, we signed that deal with them in 2008 or something. And... They took Ruin and re-released it, and then we did the three albums. Three albums. Yes. And I mean, I remember signing that deal and thinking, oh, that's it, you know, that's our career. Um, I'll be on this deal forever. But yeah, we came to the end of that deal and uh, I think just thought that it was time for a change and I don't know, we just wanted to freshen everything up and, and kind of have a team behind the record that was... I don't know, had that fresh enthusiasm about it. I, I think, I'm sure they would have done a, a good job of it, but, you know, we had always looked at the bands that Epitaph had. Uh, Every Time I Die, Converge, Ghost Inside, Parkway Drive, Bring Me the Horizon, you know, and it was like, it was like seeing a party over the street and you weren't invited, you know what I mean? So when we when we got the invite, it's like, well, hell yeah, I want to go, yeah, of course we want to be part of that. And all those bands, I haven't spoken to all of them, but the bands that we know all said um, amazing things about the label. So it was just, you know, when they came knocking, it was like, yes, please. <laughs> right. And what's for you the main difference between Daybreaker and the new album? Um, I think that the album, well, my I don't think that Daybreaker is a bad album. I just think that it was when we came to play the songs live there was too many that were slow or just didn't have the energy to fit into our set live so that was a big con a big thing for me going to the new record I was like I want to write a record that's going to have uh, like 10 or 11 uh, songs that we can play live and, and we'll keep up the energy of the show you know which ones that I have a, a lot of songs to pick from and I think that's shown like we've gone on this tour and s from day one seven new songs went in the set because they just lend themselves well to it um, so uh, for me that's the main difference I just think we had to dial back the you know like we have this bass sound and, and we like to branch out from it and try different things but I think we had just to cool off on that a little bit focus on like just the how it was going to be live, and then if we wanted to like have little bits of experimentation or anything like that, then you know just have splashes of it rather than like oh here's a whole song, because it 
there were songs that, on Daybreakers that never stood a chance of getting in our set, Absolutely. and that was, in retrospect, to me, a, a mistake. Yeah. Personally, I think that it's more heavier than your album. Yeah, no, I think it is. Well, well, I, I always say, like, I did some interview at, on our world tour when we were touring Daybreaker, and they said, you know, what what you, what you think for the next album? And I just said, heavy. Well, I'm going to make the heaviest architecture record. And to be honest, until they asked, I hadn't really thought about it. But from that, then it kind of stuck with me. I think I did the interview with Sam, and he was like, after it's like, yeah, that's what we should do. We should make just a heavy record. And that was, you know, we were playing... It turned it to be like the songs on off Daybreaker, like even if you can, even if you win, you're still a rat, and uh, these colors don't run and stuff like the heavier, more energe energetic songs that we were enjoying playing. So it was like, well, yeah, that's if we enjoy it, and the crowd's enjoying it. This is a no brainer. Let's write a heavy record, you know. But the main concern was we wanted to do a heavy record, but it still be architects. We didn't want it to be um, going down like just you know. There's a lot of like. Uh, bands, I guess that it's all very simple and a little, maybe a little bit meathead. I don't know, and a bit, I know, it lacks any sort of thought for me sometimes when it's just chugging all the time. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a time and a place for that. That's fine, but I just want, I didn't want to go down that. I didn't want to abandon everything that we built. So we had to do it in a way that still was. Uh, architects, I guess, whatever that is. What's the meaning of the the title of the of the album? Lost forever, lost together. Um, well, it actually it's it's an interesting one because that we're like throwing names down for the the title of the album when we're in the studio, and we had the line in "Youth is wasted on the young." Um, there's parts of me that are lost forever, but at least we're all lost together. And that was a, that song was actually primarily really about just growing up and and feeling like you know there are things that you that you'll never get back as you as you get older. And that's yeah, just that's a, yeah, it's just the way it is. But you know the relief is that I suppose that experience that you have is something that everyone has, and you know it doesn't. In that sense, you're not really you're not any less. You know what I mean? It's just really, it's really just all nostalgia. But I suppose in, in terms of the album, it was slightly shifted because the focus wasn't on like to do with growing up. It's really just about, you know, I mean, people can take it how they want, really. But for me, I, I've had personal problems in my life where I suppose, and it, maybe it's selfish or unfair, but I, I sort of struggled with my own personal things. But almost the realization that everyone's got their own baggage to deal with was a source of comfort and you know you, you don't feel so alone in it and for me uh, now at the point in where I'm at in my life I think one of the things that scares me most is the direction sort of we're headed as you know a species with the destruction of our, our ecosystem and and uh, you know f that feeling of powerlessness, I suppose, in, in the political process. You know, broken democracy yes. really is is what where we're at, and and that's that's scary for me. And but again, like if we if we're gonna f uh, fuck our planet up, fuck our home up, or whatever, then you know we're all gonna go down together in that. And I suppose that's another sort of you know. So I guess it, it's about like whatever your problem is. You know, people are. People are going to be in the same boat, I guess, and maybe that's selfish, but that's something I felt. You know, we were all going crazy in the studio and, and, and struggling with, I don't know, I guess maybe the pressure of it, but almost just having my bandmates around and, and knowing that, you know, we're, we're a team going through that was like, yeah, we we're all in it together, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, for me, it's a few things, and people could apply it in a different way, but. That that's your 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 opinion about. about yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, that's that's. I don't know. There's a few ways I can interpret it, but I think I wanted it to be, like, there's maybe a negative in there, but it's also like ultimately a positive thing, you know. And uh, that I, that was something that I wanted. I wanted that to be clear, you know. Tell me about the writing process. Uh, who wrote the songs? Uh, is it um, a collective uh, way of composing, or each one brings ideas? I think I could probably be an asshole and and say that like oh I do it, <laughs> but the reality is is I mean I'm 
essentially coming along with the songs, uh, and I wrote all the lyrics on the on the record. But um, the other guys in the band do absolutely help shape uh, the songs uh, that that people hear in the end. So I might come along initially with with a demo, and Dan contributes a lot in terms of like, no, nah, you know, you should change that something needs to go before there or this is how we're going to link this bit to this bit um so he really helps with that and, and sam has a big uh contribution to the way the vocals are phrased the melody in there and and things like that so it you know i i'm sort of bringing a, a fueling the fire i guess but everyone else is helping like you know uh shape what 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 comes out in the end yes. how many times it took to, um, to to create the songs and then to record it how many times what how many demo how many From different the beginning of the demos and the finishing of the album well we'd i mean we would always have lots of different versions of the songs <laughs> you i mean i would love I'll finish a demo and I'll be like, that's it, that's done, that song's great, that's going to work. And then it changes like seven times before <laughs> we get to the studio. And then when we're in the studio, little details change. And then we play the songs live and I play things they differently. Change, it's, they yes. always changing. Yes. and um, That's a good thing for the fans because they have different versions. Yeah, sure. I, I think that's that's fun for me and the rest of the guys. Like just to, you know, I kind of envy... The times when like Pink Floyd could go and play Dark Side of the Moon for a whole tour before they even recorded it, so that when they came to record it, they're like, we already kind of felt it out and and jammed it out a little bit. Obviously, that doesn't really work if we went and toured <laughs> just a new mater new material. People would stand there and go, well, I don't even know what this is. Um, so yeah, things do change a lot, but from the the first demo to the last version, for sure. I mean, it's constantly evolving and. Right. Really, it's I mean, the create, it's the creative process. Yeah, and it's really like well, John Lennon or someone said it's never finished, right? It's only abandoned, and that is the case. You just have to, you know, seal it off, call it a day, and okay, that's how we're going to leave it, and sort of hope that you know you don't get the final master through and think, fuck, I sh totally should have played that riff differently, or we should have had that vocal different. <laughs> and it happens, but you just have to go, oh well, that's where we cut it off. So. Good. Uh, I have selected the three songs that I like. On yeah. The album. Can you tell me more about that? That songs. The first one is "Cancer," mm -hmm. uh, because there is a d d this break on the middle of the song. It's very strange. Sure. Can tell me more about that that song. Um, what in terms of the music, the break yeah, in the middle. The lyrics. Um, well, yeah. I mean, in terms of the way the song's composed, I don't know. Like. I was saying yesterday, it's perfect because it gives me a chance to tune. But um, th that was actually a song for me that um, we were, me and my brother talked about it a lot and we were kind of con concerned because we were, wanted the, the album to be like high energy and it kind of have a, has kind of a slow middle to it and, you know, does have that sort of uh, strange middle section. Um, but actually it's been, ended up being really good, really fun to play live and it doesn't feel like slow or anything. It's... It's an exciting one, it's something different for us, but um, we see the lyrics are something that I wrote when uh, I got diagnosed with melanoma, skin cancer, um, so, and I did that, and I'd never written about anything personal before, a lot to do with the fact that I don't sing the lyrics, so it doesn't make sense really, um, but... I had a month where, after being diagnosed, I was basically waiting on results. I had the surgery on on my leg, and I didn't know. I didn't know if the cancer had spread around my body or uh, if the if I had, had yeah any tumors or anything like that. So it was a really troubling month, um, of course. And I and and just at some point during that month, I I did think like. I just wonder what would come out if I were, tried to write a song about it and um, you know I went through a few different things and because your mind races to all sorts of extremes worst case scenario to you know I, you know I'm gonna die and then the next minute you're like everything's gonna be okay everything's gonna be okay 
So I did go through a few different versions of the song because sometimes I would feel like it was too bleak or and I wanted it ultimately to have some sort of positive message because I think it's something that touches a lot of people and I certainly didn't want it to be insensitive. I've, I certainly haven't seen the darkest side of, of, of the disease. So I, I didn't want to talk about it as if like I'm some sort of, you know, I've survived this crazy thing because it could have killed me but I never truly suffered for it, I guess. Um, but, uh, so I ended up, you know, going back and, and tinkering with the lyrics a little bit afterwards, because once I got told that it hadn't spread and I was okay, it's impossible to then go back and write in the same mindset you had, because you're taken out of that, like, sort of, you're not scared anymore. And so I didn't want to change it too much, because I felt like it would be sort of, I was touching something that I could never, I could never go back to that headspace I was in when I wrote it. So I didn't want to change it too much because it was honest. But at the same time, yeah, I didn't want it to be too bleak. So it was an interesting one. Uh, the other one is uh, Colony Collapse. Sure. It's a very quiet song. Yeah, well, quiet issue. It was funny because it's it's kind of the ballad of the album, yes. but at the same time, it's this it's not a yeah it's yeah, not like uh at the beginning it's quiet but then yeah it's more powerful sure and I, I, it, I was really pleased that so many people seemed to have connected with that song when the stream of the album went up lots of people would tweet at us about how much they loved that song and it was definitely like the wild card of the album for us we went into the studio with no vocals tracked for it we had no idea what sam was going to do and in fact we had tried stuff and it hadn't worked out and the whole chorus, it, like the, the chord progression, the melody Sam does, wasn't, didn't even exist, I don't think, before we got in the studio. So it was a really last minute was thing. Written on the studio? Kind of. I mean, the, the basis of the song was there, but we just didn't know the chords were going to change and we didn't know what Sam was going to do. And we tried so much, so much stuff with Sam and it wasn't happening until one night had a light bulb. <laughs> yes, we're going to do it like this. Um, so I was, yeah, I was really pleased with how the song came out. In fact, we saw Henrik who uh, recorded uh, the the album just the other day in in Gothenburg, and he said, "Next album, you must do more songs like Colony Collapse." <laughs> um, but what I like about it, I think, is that it's not, you know, the, with the album in general, it's not melody all the time. So when the melody is there, it, it I feel like it kind of it packs more of a punch, or it means more. It's more. You sit up and listen because it's like the relief of a moment of of melody, right? Um, and again, the song the song was just about really just about the disaster in Fukushima and how uh, frightening that is, you know, because you don't know what to believe, you don't know how bad it truly could be, or maybe it's everything's going to be okay. But when you hear that all the tuna being caught off the coast of California are all contaminated with radioactivity yes, I think it's not okay <laughs> it sounds terrible and you hear stories of fishermen sailing for 3,000 miles with no yes, fish yes, absolutely. and you know it's not really in the news what does that mean you know and there's lots of question marks over the whole thing and so yeah that that song and it's not so it's not just really specifically about the incident it's about yeah, really yes. the human reaction to it the fear of, of not knowing i guess and the last one is castles in the uh... yeah um again we had no idea what we were doing on that song before we went <laughs> the song stayed the same but the vocals we had no idea and uh so that was a bit scary but um i really like the song and um i think sam did a really good job on it in the end the lyrics again, like it's a weird one because it's one of the more personal ones, but I felt like I could talk, I could do something more personal with it because it was something that me and Sam uh, are both, like many people are sort of afflicted with anxiety. I mean, we all have our worries, but our time in the studio was like waking up with your heart racing and just feeling stressed uh, worried I don't know like it was really like just su such high pressure in the studio and and really the song for me was about like the band and the creative process whatever like whatever this band is whatever any band is when it gets to this point when there's 
a label and fans and you're getting older and you need you got to have success otherwise you got to find something else you to do because you got to earn money and 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 not just that like we've made five albums where previously where i've come out of the studio and you know for all the people out outside of the band that come to the shows and, and enjoy the songs and connect with the music i've always had things where i just i can't listen to it because i i and i hate myself for making the wrong decisions on it and and i can't listen to it and i hear other bands music and i go they nailed it why can't i nail it why do i fuck up our our music and why is it never right and uh that's probably you know a big contributor to the pressure in the studio because you're like it's a fucking sixth album this has got to be right we've got to do it right i want to make a record that i'm truly proud of and uh it makes you feel sick uh, so that song is kind of yeah about that like you know we, we're in this band and like it should be this amazing thing and and it is sometimes i mean you know we're on this tour right now and it's fantastic i mean it's it, been an amazing like five weeks but there was some fear before of course yeah so it, i guess it's about the the duality of or the double-edged sword <laughs> of, of of you know having this amazing opportunity it's 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 incredible that we have it but also the pressure of fucking it up it is a cause of stress and anxiety for a lot of us in the band do you plan to record some dvds live dvds this year uh, with, with the tour um no i mean we had actually had our friend out who did 100 days yesterday in Cologne but that was sort of a last minute decision like oh the show's going to be a big show should we get out and film it yeah let's just do it but I I think I don't personally I don't I would never really like to do a live DVD why? because honestly it's selfish really if we play a big show and had someone film it we'd just all play like shit We'd be so nervous, we'd just fuck it up. I, I'd fuck up the songs, Dan would be dropping his drumstick, <laughs> Sam would be bailing on notes. Just because we, we crumbled under the pressure of knowing the it's there, is. you know. We did that show that was streamed on YouTube, and we were sick before it. We were just, all of us were miserable. We had such it's a horrible day. Thinking, but the fans, when they, they take a look at the DVD, they don't think so. Yeah, no, right. And I know that a lot of bands, It's difficult now because there's a lot of bands doing live DVDs and they they retrack yes. the instruments afterwards. Yes, after. So do we do a live DVD where the whole point of the DVD is ruined because we went away and re-recorded it and then it's not live anyway? Not Or do we do a live DVD where we don't do that and we take the real live audio and everyone goes... Well, why does it sound so crap compared to this other band's DVD? Well, because they cheated. So it's like, it's kind of, it's a bit of a ruined thing now, I think. It's a bit, it's kind of broken. Um, so that's difficult, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you for this interview. My pleasure. Um, I hope this night will be a great show in Paris. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be packed in there. <laughs> thank you. And see you. Cheers, man. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Hi, this is Tom from Architects, and you're listening to United Rock Nations.